Greetings. Hello, everyone, beautiful butterflies and perfect people. You are with Tunisia Ali, and today I am sharing 11 ways that you can begin to work on your core vibration, your default vibration, the overall feeling and frequency that characterizes your life chronically on a day-to-day -day basis. Oftentimes, when we hear about hear about vibration, we address a lot of the things that make us feel better in the moment that deal with the non-local vibrational feel that we have around us. And we don't always hear about those things that we have to work on within our local feel. So I wanted to talk about some of the more uncommon things that you can do or begin to focus your awareness around in order to shift into a higher vibration on a permanent and or long-term basis, okay? The first thing I wanted to share with you, and these are all things that I did in order to shift out of the vibration that I was in some years ago, and these are the things now that I work on with mastery. So they're very important, and I can guarantee you that if you begin to uh, focus some attention on these things, you will be amazed at the differences that they will make in your life. And this is going to be a two-part video. So there are 11 things I'm going to talk about first um, all together. And then I want to address how to know when your vibration is actually moving out of that lower frequency and into a higher dimension. So I'm going to break this video up into two parts. I will link them at the end, so make sure you stay around to the end. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. And if you like the video, you find that it enriches your life, give it a thumbs up, hit the button below if you need contact information for me. But the first thing I want to talk about, which is really, really important, is first of all, body awareness, sense awareness, sensory perception of how you feel. Being able to identify the emotions that are associated with various frequencies. In order to know if you're in a high vibrational uh, frequency, it's important to be able to identify what some of the emotions and feelings are that are associated with a high vibrational frequency, and then to be able to look at what some of the lower frequency vibrations are or emotions and feelings are so that you know where you are on an ongoing basis from the time you wake up in the morning until the time you go to bed at night. So the first thing I want to talk about, are what are some of, some of the things that you can feel that can let you know that you're in a high vibrational uh, <clears throat> energy field? The first and probably the most, um, the highest uh, emotions that you can feel would be love and gratitude. And when I say love, I'm not just talking about romantic love. That's kind of on the lower totem pole. I'm talking about the frequency of love for life, love for yourself, love for the gift of existence, love of connection with spirit and your creator and the creation. That is one of the feelings that is an immediate let you know I'm in the zone, I'm in the vortex. Then you have gratitude and appreciation, okay? Um, which are very easy to get to by simply reflecting on those things that you have to be grateful for, from the very minuscule to some of the larger things. You also have feelings of joy, of trust, when you feel passion, okay? It's a little under what I've talked about, but Passion is uh, an emotion, a feeling that lets you know where you are on that barometer. And by the way, these are some of the some of the e emotions along the continuum of what we can feel that I pull from Abraham Hicks' work. She identifies, I think it's in the book. Um, uh, oh, is it "Ask and You Shall Receive" or "Ask for It"? I can't think of the name of it, but these are some of the emotions um, that run the gamut of the continuum. Uh, so when you feel passion, when you feel positivity and happiness, okay, that's another level. Beneath that would be, you know, um, positive expectations, feeling energized to do things, feeling um, enthusiastic. So you can see how feeling enthusiastic, while you may feel good about something, 
and be energized to start with something, it's not going to be as high as those other emotions and feelings that I just talked about. So keep, in, keep, in, keep, some, keep some attention on that. On the antithesis, on the opposite end of the scale, are things like um, at the lowest level would be fear. All right, fear. Fear is an emotion that puts you in the absolute lowest possible vibration that you want to be in. Fear is is when you feel fearful, you know that your um, vibration has dropped from here to there. Uh, uh, above that would be feelings of unworthiness, unworthiness, not deservingness, um, feeling not enough, uh, not having uh, self-love for yourself. You can see that thing that the majority of people struggle with consciously and unconsciously is something that can keep your vibration very, very, very low. And it's something that you really, really have to be careful of. Those feelings, fear and unworthiness are worse than feeling anger and rage, which are in that same lower vibrational space as well. But fear and a feeling of uh, not feeling worthy, not feeling that you are enough, not feeling good about yourself, not having a sense of self-love, those are amongst the worst, okay? Um, on up that list are a lot of other negative emotions that run the continuum from uh, blaming people, being jealous, all the way to worry and concern. When you feel worried and concerned, which is something that we do on a normal basis because we are constantly projecting into the future, which generates anxiety. When you feel worry and concern, that is a lower vibrational emotion. So those are things that you want to avoid. So that's the first thing is being aware of where you are on the emotional continuum so that you even know, um, you know, if you're in a high vibrational state or if you're not in a high vibrational state and how much room you need in order to travel up to the highest vibrational state. The second thing that I do is I realize that where I am right now in this moment is not a reflection of my highest timeline or my highest parallel universe reality. Where you are in this particular moment is a reflection of the past, okay? It's a reflection of what you did yesterday, which means it's not actually holding the range of infinite possibilities for what is in the now moment. And whatever's in the now moment is what is your tomorrow, right? So I say that to say that if you realize that, then you don't allow where you happen to find yourself, your situation, what's around you and what's currently in your life at this time, you don't allow that to define you, which means you don't allow that to be your perspective. For example, if you are manifesting abundance in your life, whatever that may be, wealth, health, money, whatever, you remember that this right now, this moment is a reflection of that back there. So you don't get stuck there and you don't allow how you feel about this in this moment to keep you from bringing in the energy that you need to manifest whatever it is you want tomorrow or whatever other parallel universe you want to be in in order to create your reality. So that is, those two things are very, very important. The other thing, the third thing that I want you to keep your attention on is reactivity and emotional responses and uh, the mindfulness. Mindfulness in generating your own thoughts is very, very important over the long term for changing your chronic vibrational frequency. The reason why that is so important is because you can have all the wonderful thoughts you want when things are going well, but if you're not able to generate a thought that is higher than what you feel in a particular moment and what you may be experiencing, then over the long term, your vibrational frequency is always going to fall right back down to that lower level. And what we're trying to do is move up from a default vibration that may be actually here. We want to come up higher so that we can begin to tap into a different reality so that we uh, are presented with different possibilities and circumstances and situations and events in our lives. And the only way we can do that is to match what we want 
with our vibration. And that vibration is not a sometimey vibration. It's not a vibration based on everything's going well today and this is where I am. And so now I'm going to be able to manifest the things that I want to manifest. It doesn't matter the stories that people tell you and the things that you see on the internet. Life is about evolution. Life is about work, okay? And when I say work, I'm talking about self-development and inner work. I'm talking about initiating your own divinity and your own greatness. You don't get that easily. And remember the popular saying, we don't get what we want. We get what we are, okay? Your life does not reflect um, what you wish it to be. It reflects who you are. So these things are really, really important. So for the long term is what we're talking about. And that's what I want you to focus on. You have to be able to be in a space of mind where you generate the kinds of thinking, the kinds of belief systems that will take you to a higher vibration and help you to maintain that regardless of whatever's going on around you. So that means giving up your reactivity in the way that you may respond to situations around you, okay? The fourth thing, that brings me to my fourth point that I want to remind you of, and that is uh, transcending the being triggered. We hear the words, you triggered me, or this is triggering me. And we say that so much today, it's become just like the word trauma. Um, these have become buzzwords that we have embraced with all parts of our being, which in some sense is a good way to acknowledge and to bring attention to certain things. But in another sense, it allows us to make excuses for living beneath what we are capable of living. And it allows us to embrace a way of thinking that makes too much room for us to be a victim of our circumstances without realizing it. So the reason why I say this is this triggers. And uh, I'm not talking necessarily about the kinds of triggers from seriously traumatic experiences. Although I do believe you have to make a conscious decision to leave that baggage behind. You can't stay in a space forever. You have to heal whatever it is and you have to move forward. So when we talk about triggers, I'm talking about the kinds of situations that you encounter every single day, whether it's in your workplace or if it's with the person that you love, you have to learn how to transcend triggers. You have to learn how to rise above what is going on around you and detach and recognize that when you are triggered on a subtle level, unconsciously, but oftentimes consciously, when you become more mindful, you have made a decision in that moment to react a certain way. And even if it happens unconsciously, there is a point in your reaction where you become very conscious of the avenue and the street you're going down. And it's that that I'm talking about. You get to actually make a decision about Am I going to allow this to trigger me? And what way can I transcend this circumstance and look down with sort of a bird's eye view as sort of a witnessing observer and say, you know what? Look at how I'm handling this situation or look at what just happened. Um, isn't there a better way that I could have responded? And what did I get out of that exchange what did I get out of responding the way that I responded? And now that I have uh, decreased my vibration, I've got to start. I've got to start back down here again um, and work my way back up again. So what I'm trying to say is becoming mindful of what your triggers are in the first place, okay? And being proactive and having a plan in place that helps you to uh, alarm, that is going to help you to manage yourself better in situations that are challenging. Number five is about um, resisting. Stop resisting life. Get out of the habit, okay? Because these are habits, these are patterns, these are automatic ways of being that we don't think about. Things that are on autopilot, things that are being um, automated uh, via our subconscious mind. We have ways of reacting to situation and a lot of situations and a lot of times many of us have ways that we react to life. We resist life when we come up against circumstances that are displeasing, that are uncomfortable, that are challenging, that present obstacles. We go head to head with them. Okay. We don't look for a solution. We get stuck in the problem and we get stuck 
um, in this place of going against the flow of what is actually happening. And when you go against the flow of what is happen happening, it takes you out of the flow of life. It takes you out of the vortex of finding creative solutions to problems. And it also takes you out of the energy of allowing creative solutions to flow into your life. So that is very, very, very important. Looking at your life and really getting a handle on, you know, how am I resisting life? How am I resisting life? How am I going against the flow of what's happening in my life? How am I fighting? Someone does something, you don't like it, right? Let's say you get triggered, like in the previous example, and you start resisting, you start fighting back, you start defending yourself. You have to ask yourself, what is this about? And what am I really accomplishing? And isn't this really my ego? And we get stuck in that place. That's an area that I'm still working hard at. I've made a lot of progress, but that's an area. Knowing when to stop resisting challenging situations, there's nothing to prove, there's nothing to defend. And you will find that in certain areas of your life, it's very easy. And in other areas, it's not as easy. In those areas where there's still challenge, it lets you know there's still a lot of room for self-mastery. The other part, number six, is healing your past, okay? You will find me to be a very matter-of-fact person when it comes to productive thinking and um, belief systems that work for you rather than against you. Why? Because how we see our life is so important. The view in which or the point of view in which we give to our experiences is probably one of the most important, if not the most important factor in how life unfolds before you and whether or not you're going to feel empowered and in your divinity. So healing your past is a very important part of that. If you have issues that you know you need to heal, if you have lower emotions that you have not expressed by, that are the byproduct of, of, of an experience, something that has happened to you. I'm talking about emotional debris and residue. You have to heal that. You have to heal that pain. You have to allow yourself to experience the fullness of it so that you can release it, okay? So that you don't have to continue to carry it um, one day after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. That brings me to my next point, number seven. When we don't do that and we carry these negative emotions in our energy field, they start to define us. So one of the ways, number seven, one of the ways that you can begin to really chip away at your chronic default vibration, which may not be at the level that you want it at, is to begin to rewrite your past, okay? It's important when we look at the stories that we tell ourselves every day. And I talk about this in my book, Manifesting Your Masterpiece, okay? Uh, this is a book of daily quotes. And a lot of what you will hear me say in my journey and on my channel comes from a lot of the information that I've worked through in my life. So these are just day-to-day -day quotes that you can help to... Um, heal your energy with. But that story that you tell yourself about whatever happened in your past, how you see that thing, the vantage point from which you choose to look at it determines whether you will feel empowered or whether you will be disempowered. Okay, there's so much research today that points to the fact that our memories are not reliable. Okay, Rather than the subconscious mind functioning as more of a camera that is videoing every single thing, it's more it can be likened to a scrapbook, okay? More like this. And it's affected by the state of mind we were in, our point of view, the distortions that we were holding as a result of our uh, belief systems and so many things. So it's important to be able to Look at your situation and the story that you have been telling yourself day in and day out and ask yourself, is this working for me? 
is the story that I'm telling myself about how I grew up and what happened in my past or the failure of that relationship. In what light is that story painting me in? Do I feel empowered when I tell that story? And how am I holding on to that story almost as a badge of honor? And maybe what would I be without that story? Or even better, what would I be if I didn't tell that story that particular way and I was able to see that story from a higher perspective? So I invite you to look at the stories that you're telling yourself. The things that make you feel like a failure, the things that make you feel like a victim, the things that make you feel not good enough. What are some of the things that you're telling yourself over and over and over day in, day in and day out that influence how you see life, that influence what you feel is actually possible, that is the conversational piece for the interactions that you have, that influences your potential to see into what is possible for your future? What is it that you're telling yourself on a day-to-day -day basis? So I've listed seven things and I want to get into the next five things along with some of the ways that you can tell when you're making a dent in your vibrational frequency or some of the things to look for along the way. So this was the first part of the video. If this video has enriched you in any way, please subscribe to the video, share it with someone that you care about and then make sure you click on the um, image that you'll see coming up shortly. You probably see it already above you. That is going to link you to part two of this video to continue the dialogue about this oh so very important topic, okay? You're with Tunisia Ali of Butterfly Transformations. I help people to get clear. I help them to heal and uh, clear energetic and emotional blockages. I help them to up-level their mindsets and to manifest the abundance that is their divine birthright. I do this by taking you through my nine secret pathways of my power dime formula for prosperity, consciousness, and wealth creation. You can reach me with the contact information in the description. I am also an author, a motivational speaker, uh, an energy healer, tarot reader, spiritual mentor, and life coach. So I hope to see you in the second video. Don't forget to like this one. Talk to you soon.